What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we are going to look at the June 14th episode of Impact and what an episode it was. This episode just kind of kept my interest throughout the entire evening. Uh, usually I'm kind of teetering back and forth, either playing on my phone, playing on the laptop, but this episode really had my interest. And it seemed like a lot of other people thought this episode was really good as well. It seems like Impact starting to bring some of those viewers back. As I've noticed, a lot of people are saying, you know, I decided to give Impact a shot tonight, and I'm glad I did. So, let's talk about it. So, we open the show with Grado. He comes out with Katarina. Um, they kind of, during their entrance, they show a clip of what happened in last week's main event between Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan. Grado and Katarina do their thing on the turnbuckle. All of a sudden, we see Eddie slide in the ring with a kendo stick in hand, lays out Grado, takes the kendo stick, kind of points it in Katarina's face, and she leaves the ring. Eddie grabs a microphone, and he starts saying that he was about to end Callahan last week when Tommy Dreamer stuck his nose in his business, and then he's going to expose Tommy for the fraud that he is. At this point, Tommy Dreamer comes out. Tommy tells him he stopped him from making the biggest mistake of his life. Um, Tommy says he needs to move on and move forward. He brings up Alicia, and this kind of sets Sammy, uh, sorry, Eddie off even more. Um, Eddie gets into Dreamer's face. Dreamer pushes him down. He kind of helps Eddie back up. Eddie takes a second to collect himself and then nails Dreamer right over the head with the kendo stick. Um, wow. So, first off, this needs to happen at Slammiversary. Um, it, it's just amazing what they've done here, where they took Sammy and Eddie and just kind of split it apart, and now we have two full feuds. While one, not so much yet, we'll talk about it later on, but the Eddie vs. Tommy Dreamer stuff has really evolved. Uh, so, first I want to say that this segment, which was taped back in April after Redemption, and what they were referencing when they taped it was the events that happened at Redemption. But, I mean, everything worked so well from what happened last week in the woods that they were able to translate it to work for this as well. And that's a great job by Impact for being able to do that with uh, such limited footage in, what they tape, four nights? I mean, what they're able to do in four nights of taping was fantastic. However, I do like the idea of them doing shorter tapings. And second, I... I don't know too much about Eddie Edwards. Like I said, I haven't followed Impact for very long. I watched it back in the beginning, and then I got out for probably about 10 years, and now being back into it. I mean, what I kind of got from Eddie Edwards is he was pretty bland and kind of vanilla baby face, and just his intensity and everything else in this feud has completely turned my opinion on him, and him as a heel, which he's basically transitioned to, is... Amazing, and I didn't expect that from him. So very happy with the way they opened it. Like I said, I'm always for them opening a match, but when you have a segment like this, you can't go wrong. So let me go backstage, and Tommy Dreamer's talking to Scott Demore, and Tommy is pissed, you know, about being disrespected and the fact that he was only here to help. He says, I'm done, and he grabs his shit and leaves. So continuing it on. Uh, then we go to the virtual studio. We get a rundown of the rest of the show. I'm kind of over the virtual studio here. I mean, I like the idea that they were trying something new, but I don't know. Maybe we'll try something else. I'm just not feeling it anymore. So we get our first match of the evening, and it's the returning Rebel versus Taya Valkyrie. Um, they put on a good match. Uh, welcome back chance for Rebel. Uh, both women looked good. Um... Rebel's athleticism, her flexibility, everything. She looked great in the ring. I think she's almost 40 years old, too. So, uh, good stuff. Um, not too familiar with her, but like I said, what I saw from her, I did enjoy. And Taya, she just does a fantastic job. I think she's one of the best heels that Impact has in the Knockouts division. Uh, hopefully, I guess later in the summer, we'll get to see more of her in, I guess, the July tapings because she was not at the June tapings because of getting married to Johnny Impact. Um, but Ty ends up getting the victory here. Rebel sets up for a moonsault. Ty moves out of the way. He hits her with a spear. Road to Valhalla. That's it. Uh, Ty grabs the mic, and she calls out Madison Rain, you know, saying that it's been a while since she's been here, but things have changed, and this is my kingdom now, which sets up a match for next week, which, unfortunately, I see Madison Rain going over, but, hey, it is what it is. 
Taya was, wasn't going to be here for the taping, so that makes sense. So we go to commercial, and we come back, and we have just go right into a GWN flashback moment with a triple threat match between AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Christopher Daniels. A fantastic match that it was, but just an odd transition, and just keep the logo up there. Just kind of, you know, you're showing, you're advertising for this this program or streaming service and you, you don't keep the logo on there because i mean i feel like people just like me sometimes i'll walk away for a minute during a commercial break and if i come back in if i was a casual viewer and i walked away and came back and this was on i'd be confused as hell so just leave the logo up there that's all i'm asking um then we get a backstage interview with Mackenzie interviewing Matt Seidel. She asks him how he, he's going to beat Brian Cage. Uh, he says that he his strength is on the or Cage's strength on the outside is just a facade, and that he will use his inner strength to beat him. So we had some news on Mackenzie this week, uh, where it looked like I, they had hired Alicia from Ambi to do their backstage stuff as she was at the Toronto taping or uh, not Toronto. Uh, the Canada Tavens, I don't remember where they were. Uh, Ontario, that's where they were. Um, doing her, their tapings, so people kind of thought Mackenzie was on her way out. It all of a sudden got reported by a bunch of sites, and it blew up. Mackenzie was like, oh, that's news to me. So right now, what, we hear, what we're hearing is that Mackenzie is going to do the U.S. tours and or U.S. shows, and Alicia will be doing the Canada shows. I'm glad to keep both of them. I think they're both very good at what they do. I love... Alicia's Ambi page on YouTube, so many great interviews, and I think Mackenzie brings, you know, something different to the table with her backstage interviewing. I love the, her facial reactions and just their interaction with the wrestlers, so good to keep them both there, and I'm glad to hear that. Uh, we get to see OVE. Callahan is supporting or sporting a nasty-looking eye. Uh, he says he counts it as a victory because Eddie is losing his mind and soon his wife. Um... And then he says he's sending Jay Chris out there to take out El Hijo de Fantasma later on in the evening. And we will get that match later on, and that opens up a whole new world. So up next, we have the Cult of Lee versus KM and Falaba. Kind of a comedy match here. I, I do enjoy the stuff that KM and Falaba are doing together. Uh, Don Callis made a good point when he said that Ba is so over that he's even getting KM to be cheered. Good stuff. Um... The two of them, KM and Ba, controlled a good portion of the beginning of the match. Uh, ba got poked in the eye by Caleb Conley. Uh, KM goes to check on him. Ba, obviously disoriented, hits KM with a Samoan drop. Lee takes out Fala Ba. Caleb Conley comes in, rolls up KM, and they get a victory. After the match, KM and Ba argue. KM pushes Ba down, so, you know... They, they always seem to be on opposite pages, so we'll see where that goes. I would assume probably we're going to get this for a little while longer until a match between the two of them. So we go to LAX in the clubhouse, and King says everything is good and says I still have something even better. He says next week he has a tag title match set up for LAX. They all share a drink. Uh, Diamante, Ortiz, and Santana all leave. King is left alone and says the world is mine. So he just plays this role fantastic. And we all know there's something going on here. He is not a man to be trusted. So apparently some news on Diamante is that she's injured again. Squared Circle Sirens had posted something about her missing a few shows due to injury. Um, but she is still advertised for a Queens of Combat show later on in the month. So they were one of the sites that broke the news about Mackenzie, which she shot down. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. So, I mean, if she's going to do anything, their next tapings aren't till the end of July. And then we get our number one contendership match with Moose versus Eli Drake. This happened at House of Hardcore. Uh, winner faces Aries at Slammiversary. Unfortunately, we don't get a full match here, so we get a little bit of clips here and there of the match. Um, but they put on a decent match together. Moose ends up going over with the spear. Um, unfortunately, most of us knew what the outcome of this match was prior to this actually airing because I think it was during the press conference for Slammiversary they announced it would be Moose versus Austin Aries. So there was that. Um, Unfortunately, House Hard Hardcore crowd wasn't really into it, so it really wasn't different than taking the match out of the impact zone. 
Um, but I, I'm not completely sold on Moose being the next world champion yet. I really hope him and Austin Aries have a good build to Slammiversary. I mean, Moose hasn't done anything crazy this year for Impact. I mean, he's kind of been in minor feuds. He, he was doing stuff with Alberto for a little while, and then K, uh, K, um, Congo Kong, So and then Bobby Lashley earlier in the year and last year. So we'll see. I hope this changed my mind. I, I think... It would be better up, better off to set him up for a title run starting at Bound for Glory. But like I said, we'll see. I'm curious to know what the build is like. And maybe it will change my mind. Uh, speaking of Eli Drake, he has a contract extension good through July 31st. Not sure if he will be at Slammiversary. If he is, I would put him in a match against Johnny Impact. Good way to bring him in. Just... Just kind of have a match between the two of them, much like they had it bound for glory, which I thought was a really good match until it was interrupted by Alberto El Patron. Um, he recently did an interview with uh, X-Pac on his podcast, and they he, he does fantastic work in his interviews. And he's a promo guy. Um, but everything about Eli Drake I like a lot. Um, if you guys get a chance to take a listen to it, and you can search it on YouTube. It's available. I think they're on Westwood One or something like that. But a really good interview with Eli Drake. Um, he really, his mind is kind of up in the air right now. I guess he's got options, but it was good to hear him agree with Don Callis when Don Callis said that Eli Drake is almost too good at his job being a heel and getting cheered, and I, I think Eli understands that So because he, he made a comment saying that you almost have to be bad as a heel to get booed, so... We'll see there. Hopefully he does sign an extension. I would love to have Eli here, but he's got to do what he's got to do for himself. Uh, then we have a knockouts match. Tessa Blanchard versus Kira Hogan. No DQ. Uh, they put on a great match here. Um, Kira showed why she is the girl on fire. She was on fire for this match. She started out really hot, doing a bunch of moves, hit a baseball slide on Tessa, hit a Hurricane Rana on the outside. Tessa brings a chair in the ring. Um, you know, they get a couple of good spots with the chair. I think uh, Kiara threw the chair at Tessa at one point, st stood it up in the ring. She went to hit Tessa, I guess, with a spinning neck breaker. Uh, Tessa kept getting, you know, doing what she's doing, like much with Madison Rain, getting overconfident, getting angry at the referee. At one point, she did push the referee. Um, like I said, Kiara went to do a move on the chair, but it was reversed, and... Tessa dropped her on the chair and put her away for the win. But like I said, this was a good match, a lot of fun. I'm glad to see Kiara Hogan doing some good things in Impact. And like we all said, Tessa is going to be a huge part of the Knockouts division. Um, and then we get a recap of all the attacks that had happened backstage throughout the last month or so. And uh, they discussed it a little more in the virtual studio. I think Callis made mention to the police getting involved and all this other stuff. As they, I think they, they said they had cops or off, um, retired cops on hand or something like that. But uh, they, it made it seem a lot more serious, so that was cool. And then we have Jake Chris versus El Hijo del Fantasma. Um, of course, Dave Chris was at ringside for this, so he made his presence known early, giving Jake the upper hand. Um, however, Fantasma was able to turn it around, use body scissors, and rolls up Jake for the win. Of course, after the match, Dave got involved. Phantasma was able to fend the two off. Sammy Callahan brings his ass to the ring, bat in hand. All three of them are attacking Phantasma. They start to remove his mask. Lights go out. Pentagon Jr. comes out for the save. Um, you know, it's it looks like they're going with Pentagon versus Sammy Callahan. I, I love that. That should be fantastic. Um, next week, they did make a match between... Pentagon Jr. and Phantasma versus OVE. Uh, this makes sense for Pentagon to come out as well as he tagged with Phantasma a couple weeks back against Matt Seidel and Austin Aries. So again, like I said, they just took this Eddie and Sammy feud, just broke it off, and it made it seem so natural. that Just doing such, such good things. That brings us to our main event, Brian Cage versus Matt Seidel for the X Division Championship. Uh, Seidel starts to tries to pick his spots early. You know, he's grabbing onto the ropes, get, trying to take any opportunity he can. Uh, he ends up hitting a kick and then a standing shooting star press. Cage just stands up, deadlifts him. 
throws him over his shoulders. At this point, Kongu Kong's music comes out, and they kind of just come out and stand at the bottom of the entrance ramp, just kind of staring at the ring, just taking, seeing what's going on. Um, so this goes to distraction. Matt Seidel's able to gain control a little bit. Didn't last long. Um, let's see. Cage hits Seidel with a buckle bomb. At this point, Seidel rolls out of the ring. Brian Cage goes after him. The ref is counting at this point, and we're not even aware of it just because you're so focused on the two of them. Um, Cage throws Seidel into the ring. The ref goes to check on Seidel. At this point, Kong Kong throws Brian Cage into the steps, and we hear the bell ring. We're like, oh, what the hell? Brian Cage gets counted out. His first loss in impact. Uh, what a way to book this. I, I, I really like what they did here. I think this was a good job. You didn't make anybody look weak. You kind of transition Brian Cage against another bigger opponent. This kind of keeps him out of the title picture for a little while anyway, just because you put the title on him and you're in one of those scenarios where it doesn't look like anybody's going to beat him. So I liked what they did there. Uh, this keeps the title on Matt Seidel. Maybe Jimmy Jacobs and Kong Kong going to start something with Matt Seidel. I would be fine with that. Um... Like I said, I was never a big fan of Congo Kong. Once they put Jimmy Jacobs with them, that changed a lot. I, I really like what they did there, and I think they did a good job booking this match. Um, now you kind of get kind of the weight off the shoulders for Brian Cage taking his first loss, not making him look weak, but you're able to get that out of the way so you don't book yourself in a corner later on. Uh, so that was the show, and then all of a sudden... We go backstage, and Falaba is laying down, and Petey Williams is holding up the X card. Duck comes up. He starts screaming and yelling at him. All of a sudden, Petey Williams is being handcuffed. Petey's pleading his case, and the cop just kind of walking him away. And I was like, all right, Mike, I guess that's the end of the show. We're going to leave it on a cliffhanger. We'll see what happens next week. Nope. Cop takes his hat off, rolls up his sleeve, starts slugging away at Petey Williams. Um, and I was like, holy crap. I was like, oh, shit, that's Killer Cross. So, the show ends with him saying, you should probably call the police. Now, not too many times do we finish a show, and I'm really excited to tune in next week because I'm not sure where they're going with this. Um, but I, I really don't know too much about him. I knew his face, but outside of that, I, I'm interested to know what he's all about. He looks like a big dude who's a badass, so... It, like I said, I really don't have enough good things to say. I really enjoyed this show. Um, I hope you guys did as well. Uh, it just good things going on in the wrestling world right now. Like I said in my podcast with Matt, that if you're not a fan of one thing, you always have other options, and that's what's so great in the wrestling business right now. Um, that is all I have for you guys today. I'm not sure if I'm going to do an impact report this week or I'm going to do a review of the one night only, Zero Fear Tonight, which looks which has a fantastic card as well. So you guys will see when it gets posted. So thanks for checking out my video. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.